Assalamualaikum dear students. I warmly welcome all of you to Allama Iqbal Open University Studio. Today's program focuses on present continuous tense and I hope you will enjoy this segment as much as you did the previous one that discussed the present simple tense. This idea too has been taken from the course book that has already been provided to you by the university. I believe that all of you know the importance of learning English language today. As a matter of fact, it is the only language that can be called a true source of language for the international community. On the other hand, it is a fact too that there are millions of people in the world who cannot speak or even understand English. But English seems to be the only choice available for the international community for the sake of communication. Dear students, it is a misconception in the minds of many Pakistani people that when the native speakers of English speak English, they do not use tenses. It is a funny idea, isn't it? I mean, have you ever used your mother language without using tenses? Or the rules of grammar? Surely not. As we cannot convey our message or feeling to the other people without using the rules of grammar. In other words, if proper time concept is not used, it will be very difficult for the listeners to decode the real message which we want to convey. So, to teach you proper English or to teach you the proper time concept, today we have with us Mr. Arshad Mahmood. Welcome Mr. Arshad. How are you doing? Thank you. Fine. Kindly tell me how are you going to teach uh, present continuous tense to our students? Uh, it is going to be almost the same way that we did last time. We had right. uh, present simple tense and right. we focus on two different angles. Mm -hmm. uh, we focus the tense from uh, the point of view of function and form. Right. So, I think uh, I should start. And uh, assalamu alaikum dear learners, I also welcome you to this studio. I hope you're enjoying good health and enjoying your studies as well. I hope you remember what we did in the last program. Can you recall? No? Yes? Yes, we did the present simple tense last time from two different angles, the form and the function. And I told you that the main function of this tense was to state something, for example, to talk about a routine. Uh, for example, he goes to college in the morning or he plays in the evening, or maybe habit, he collects stamps, and maybe some facts. For example, the sun rises in the east. You know, language is a very interesting phenomenon, and at the same time, it is very complex as well. As you know, that all languages in the world make use of almost similar sounds. Or we can say that the sounds are the base of each language, but still we are unable to understand the languages of other nations. In the similar fashion, different languages have different rules of grammar and if someone wants to learn a foreign language, he will have to follow those rules strictly. Otherwise, he will not be able to use that language correctly if he relies on the rules of his mother tongue only. Sorry for interruption, Mr. Memo. You know the funny part, when I was in my school, I used to think that I do not need to learn tenses or the functions to learn English. I know what you want to say, you know. Many people, even in the Western world, they believe that people, they don't know the tenses. They don't need to use the tenses when they speak their mother tongue. Mm. But that's a wrong notion. There's a man called Frank Palmer in his book, Grammar. He discusses the same issue. He says that many people think that when native speakers, they use language, they don't use tenses. Yeah, but that's a wrong thing idea. in my mind. Yeah, that's a wrong idea. So I have observed that when students use the rules of their mother tongue to speak English, mm -hmm. they commit very glaring mistakes, although they're interesting. For example, once a teacher asked a boy as to why he was absent the previous day, the boy replied, my was paper. 
Uh-oh. <laughs> Got it? Interesting, really, because he was simply translating from his mother tongue, mm -hmm. Urdu, into English. Right, right. So, in the similar manner, there are mistakes in the area of translation and pronunciation. For example, uh, once in my classroom, I gave people a task to write an essay on hard work. Mm -hmm. And one of the boys, he finished his essay by something very interesting. I would call it historical. Mm -hmm. He said, if you work hard, success will kiss your feet. Oops. <laughs> that so, is really funny. <laughs> so he simply changed uh, that was there in Urdu into English language. In the similar fashion, people commit a lot of mistakes in the area of pronunciation. There was a boy perhaps from Gilgit mm -hmm. or Sawat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these people, they don't have words ending with V. So they change into uh, something like U. For example, have becomes have or believe becomes right, believe. Right, right. That's their so, pronunciation. Yeah, native because uh, native areas. And there are some other mistakes too. So the boy, he was asked why he was late for the class. He said, I was in the mosque. He just said, what? He wanted to say mosque. Mosque. Right. He said, sorry, it was a slip of tangu. Oh. So you see, this happens. <laughs> in fact, this really happens. That is really funny. Yeah. So let's come back to the topic that is present continuous tense. So how are you going to teach our students the present continuous tense? Right. As a matter of fact, we cannot convey the messages or feelings to other people without using the rules of grammar. Mm -hmm. In other words, if proper tense and time concept is not used, it will be difficult for the listener to understand what I said. So proper rules are very important to convey the message. So to teach you the proper time concept, today we will be doing our second program. This program will be focusing on the present continuous tense, which is also called present progressive tense. You know, different languages use the idea of time differently. Most languages in the world make use of the verb to do so. For example, English, Urdu, French, etc. In all these languages, the verb takes different shapes to convey different time concepts. For instance, in Urdu we say, wo ja raha hai, wo gaya, wo jayega, etc. And in the similar fashion, in English we say, he goes, he will go, and he is going. So you can see that in both the languages, proper time concept has been used to differentiate one sentence from the others. Otherwise, we cannot judge whether the speaker talked about the past, future or present. It's interesting, isn't it? This is how different languages operate. After this program, your task is to observe how your mother tongue shows time concept. This will help you a lot in understanding the nature of English tenses. And this, this was done with the English people, English kids in the school. They were given a lot of Latin rules just to understand the rules of their mother tongue. Now that you've got some idea of time concept, be careful in using it for the English language. Since English is an entirely different language, naturally it has its own rules of grammar. And once you have learned all the rules of English grammar, you will find English both interesting and easy. So are you ready to take the bull by its horns? That's great. It's not difficult, I believe. Right. My plan is to teach the tenses from two different angles, the form and the function. And I hope that you will enjoy learning this tense. Form simply means the structure of the tense and function means how and where it should be used. As a matter of fact, if you observe if you recall how you were taught these things, you will see that the moment you took the examination, everything disappeared. The reason was that the uh, focus of the teachers was mainly on the form, not function. So you didn't know how to use a tense and where to use it, but you knew the form. For example, you knew that it should be uh, do or does in the tense where in Urdu we use jata hai, jati and sort of things. So that's why you see if form is very important if you want to put these tenses to your long-term memory. Now, you should recall how you were taught tenses in your school and then ask yourself why you forgot those rules soon after the exam was over. As I said earlier, we will be doing today's tense from two different angles. Now, be careful in learning the form of it. So you want to say the form and function both are equally important. Important and quite different from each other. Right. For example, form, you see, affirmative, we can also call it positive. And you can see the formula subject and then H that is helping verb plus main verb and then object. I've got six examples here. Uh, Salman is drinking milk. So what is happening here, Salman is the subject, is drinking. So if you drop is and just say Salman drinking milk, the uh, idea will not be clear. So Salman is drinking what? 
milk. Then you've got I am writing a letter. So it means am goes with I as is goes with Salman. So the sentence is I am writing a letter. You are eating an apple. Uh, here it reminds me of something uh, important. You can see in Urdu we can say I am eating apple. But in English if you don't add an or a that is called indefinite article it will be wrong. So we must add a or an before uh, or to the, uh, to the countable things. Next sentence is Kashif is reading a book. Again Kashif is just like Salman because it is third person. They are playing a match and with they we use are and again ing form. They are playing what? A match. Can you give an example of us like we are doing? We are standing, we are talking with each other, you are asking me questions, I am replying and uh, all of like these are, we've got examples good of, examples of yeah. present continuous tense here. You've got, we are enjoying the movie. Again, it is not something, let's say it's not a fact, it is something that is going on. So we can see the, this tense like in these uh, structures is used because something is going on at the moment of speaking. Right. Now the second thing is question, what we call interrogative. interrogative. And now what happens in English? A uh, helping verb comes to the beginning right. and sub subject comes after that. So you can see the same sentence, Salman is drinking milk, has been changed into, is Salman drinking milk? And don't forget to add question mark at the end. Right. Second sentence, am I writing a letter? Same you can see, am goes to the beginning, but writing again takes ing form and object doesn't change. It takes the same place. Right. Are you eating an apple? Is Imran posting the letter? Are they playing tennis? Are we going to Lahore? Can you make any sentence? Question um, form. Are you asking me a question? Good. With very a good. question mark. I think that's <laughs> enough. Good. So we'll move to the third concept that is negative. Subject in the beginning. Helping verb must be there with not. Right. Plus main verb and then object. For example, Salman is drinking milk. I am not writing a letter. You are not eating an apple. Kashif is not reading a book. You can see like uh, verb is in the same form, ing form, added to base form. Right. Object is there and subject is there. Only thing that is being added here is not. not. They are not playing a match. We are not enjoying the movie. Right. So that's very easy. If you read it in detail, it's very easy to keep it in your mind for a longer time. I think uh, I've been teaching uh, these tenses for last uh, about 12 years now. Right. I think uh, continuous tenses are the easiest, easiest sentences form for of any tenses. foreigner because yes. you simply add is, am, are, you should know it should be is or am or are and then simply change into the verb should be changed into ing form. Right. That's something very simple. The simplest tense that yeah. you ever taught. Yeah. We'll move to the function now. Function, I think, is uh, more important than the form because you should know where and how to use this tense. So, number one, we use a present continuous or progressive tense to talk about temporary actions and situations that are going on around now, before, during, and after the moment of speaking. For example, hurry up, we're waiting for you. They are playing chess. You can make so many sentences like this keeping in mind the action that is going on. For example, you're sitting watching television, you can say, I'm sitting in my chair, I'm watching television, and the two boys fighting with each other, so and so. So many sentences can be formed in this way. We can also use this tense to talk about what is going on around a particular time that we are thinking of. For example, at seven, when the post comes, I'm usually having breakfast. You see, actually you're not having breakfast right now, but you're imagining what you do at that time. So at that time, you're usually doing breakfast. She does not like to be disturbed if she is working. Again, imaginary situation, not physical going on right now, but you're talking about something that usually happens or talking about somebody, how he behaves or she behaves in a particular situation. You look lovely when you're smiling. Again, imaginary. We also use the present progressive tense to talk about developing or changing situations even if these are very long lasting. For example, the child's getting bigger every day. Look, you cannot see, you cannot observe the physical change in the child's body, 
but you, you can feel definitely that you can compare his physical features with what he was in the past. The climate is getting warmer. Similarly, the universe is expanding. This is what many scientists believe, as a matter of fact. But you see, you cannot see the universe expanding, but we use this tense for this. We cannot say the universe expands. And man is growing smaller in height. Again, a fact, but you see, it's right. Man is growing uh, smaller in height if you compare yourself with maybe the man who was there in the 15th century, 16th century, or maybe before, before Christ, BC. Glaciers are melting gradually. And here I would like to uh, tell you how to pronounce the word glacier as well. Usually people pronounce the word glacier. That is wrong. Americans say glacier, but since the main data lying here in our minds belong to British English, so we should say glacier, just like calcium, not calcium. Right, coming back to the tense, the function. To talk about future, we also use this tense. Interesting, isn't it? I mean, talking about future but using present function. For example, we are leaving for Lahore tomorrow. So if you simply, if you simply drop tomorrow and you say we are leaving for Lahore, it might be an action going on right now at the moment of speaking. But just because of the addition of tomorrow, that is an adverb, we change this into future tense. But the tense is present, concept is future. Come and see us next week if you are passing through London. And similarly, we are playing match next month. I think I said something wrong. We are playing a match. I must be there. Are they going to visit us? Question mark. Must be there. And the tone should be rising again. Najam is not leaving for Karachi tomorrow. Similar fashion, you are using present continuous tense to convey something about future that hasn't taken place yet. And we also use present continuous tense for repeated action, something that takes place again and again uh, at the moment of speaking. For example, why is he hitting the dog? Can you imagine how somebody is hitting the dog? So you can see action like you can simply make a picture of an action going on when a person is hitting a dog. He is hitting the dog again and again. So for this we use this tense. Uh, some more examples. He is watching a lot of movies these days. Again, action going on again and again. Why is he complaining like this? And again, yeah, complaining doesn't mean only once. Maybe we can say it has become his uh, second habit, like he's all the time making complaints. So we use this sort of tense. And the last example is the child is ringing the bell again and again. Again, imagine it is simply like uh, the first sentence where I said the child is uh, hitting, the man is hitting the dog and ringing the bell. They simply, they are just like each other. For physical feelings, sure, we use the same tense. Uh, for example, the words, uh, the verbs that refer to the physical feelings, for example, feel, hurt and ache. They can also be used in the simple or progressive tense without much difference of meaning. Got the point? Present simple tense or continuous but no change in the meaning. For example, how do you feel or how are you feeling? Meanings are same, message is same. My head aches or my head is aching. This tense is also used to narrate something or to describe something. For example, a picture, a scenery, anything. For example, I've got a picture in my mind. Uh, I can say, this is a picture of my family. You can see on the left, it is my father who is sitting. He's wearing a blue shirt. Beside him is my mother who is uh, smiling. And then my younger brother who is sitting, he's wearing joggers. So you can extend it to anything. And here I think uh, our students must be very careful because this is the tense that is usually used in description. And here they commit a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. For example, he is go, it should be he is going. Uh, so whenever you want to describe something, this sort of tense should be used. For example, this school sports car is going on, you're watching people playing in the ground. So you can like describe the actions or narrate whatsoever going on. But you see, there are some verbs which can't be used in present progressive form. Right. Uh, if you use them, uh, the meanings either change or it is considered to be something wrong. Uh, for example, I like this picture. I cannot say I'm liking this picture. Yeah. Do you believe what he says? Or instead of saying, do you believing or are you believing? That will be wrong. And the box contains toffees. We cannot say the box is containing, containing to toffees. Similarly, uh, you've got uh, some other verbs like doubt, 
I cannot say I doubt, I am doubting what you say, I doubt what you say. And then you've got no and love and hate. I cannot say I'm hating my enemy, I simply hate my, hate enemy. my enemy. That simply conveys almost the same sense. I mean, uh, we cannot say it just to convey emotions. We should simply drag the structure according to our wishes. No, it is not possible. So hate should be used in present simple tense, not continuous tense. And prefer and realize, recognize. I cannot say I am recognizing you. I recognize you. Yeah, you're right. So remember, understand, suppose, want, wish, right. sound. So there are so many uh, verbs which cannot uh, be used in ing form and if you use them, the use will be considered wrong. So that means forms and functions both are equally important, important definitely. and are quite different from each sure, other. Sure, sure. So that is all I had for the day. Right. Thank you, Mr. Mahmood. That was great. And I hope, students, you have got the whole idea of present continuous tense and I believe that this idea is going to be there in your minds for a longer time. That's all from Alama Iqbal Open University Studios. Thank you so much. Take care. Allah Hafiz.